stay a while and listen. Today, I want to tell you a story called The Half Troll Boy. Now, once upon a time, there was this blacksmith, and he was out in the forest working on making coal for his blacksmith, for his smithy. And while he was working, unknown to him, he was observed by this skooksvro, and that means forest troll. Now this forest troll, a female one, was observing him, and she quite liked the look of him, if you know what I mean. So she had been observing him for a few days, and she noticed that every time around lunchtime his wife came and uh, gave him lunch. So one day, right before lunchtime, she changed her shape to look like his wife. She went up to him, started talking to him, and seduced him thoroughly. They had their naughty time, and as the forest troll was leaving, she stole his axe. A little while later, the blacksmith's wife came along, and he realized immediately that he had been bamboozled, fooled, seduced by something. He didn't know what, so he kept his mouth shut, because he was terrified of his wife. Time passed, and maybe around 13 years later, while the blacksmith was working in the smithy, a young boy came walking up, introduced himself, and said that he was looking for work. Now, the blacksmith, he had basically just about enough work for himself, and he explained this to the boy and said that, unfortunately, I can't hire you. There's only enough work for me. I wouldn't know what to do with you. Well, that's a shame, said the boy. My mother recommended you wholeheartedly. And she also said that if you didn't have any work for me, that I would um, make sure that you could uh, sharpen my axe before I went away. Your mother said that? said the blacksmith. Yes. And the boy took out his axe. The blacksmith took the axe, studied it, and he said to him, But, young boy, this is my axe. Where did you get this axe? Oh, my mother gave it to me. She said it belonged to my father. And the blacksmith realized who this young boy was. It was his son. Because, you see, the forest troll had gotten pregnant and gave birth to a half-troll boy. Now, he looked very, very human. And so you couldn't tell that he had troll ancestry. Now, the blacksmith realized that he couldn't let this boy just wander off, so he actually gave him work to do in the smithy. Um, but he couldn't pay him, but he promised him room and board for his work. Now, it turns out that this boy was insanely strong and could do a lot of work during the days. So the, the business for the blacksmith actually went up. So it was a very, very profitable agreement. Unfortunately though, as all growing boys do, especially half troll ones, they eat a lot of food. And the blacksmith's wife at first, she was a little annoyed that her husband would just hire this random kid to do work in the blacksmith. But as time went on, and the boy kept eating and eating and eating, she became furious. 
This young boy was eating them out of the house. She couldn't afford keeping this young boy here. And she told this to her husband and made it very, very clear that this boy had to leave. No questions about it. And the blacksmith, yet again, was afraid of his wife and didn't dare to contradict her or, you know, put his foot down because he would lose that foot. So he broke the news to the half-troll boy and the boy, he said that um, this is regrettable news. But I understand. However, for my services to you during these years, because two years had passed, and since your business has increased because of me, I demand some compensation before I leave. Oh, anything I can give you, said the blacksmith. Good. First of all, I want three linen coats. I want one white linen coat, one red linen coat, and one black linen coat. And before the blacksmith could protest or say that he agreed, the boy said, and I also want three swords. One sword should weigh one kilo. The second sword should weigh 20 kilos. And the third and final sword, 50 kilos. But that, that's preposterous, said the blacksmith. Oh, you think so, said the boy. Maybe I should go and uh, have a talk with my stepmother then. Tell her exactly what our little relationship is. Oh, oh, oh no, 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 don't do that, boy. I'll get you your coats, I'll make you your swords, just don't tell my wife, okay? So the blacksmith got him his three coats, made in linen, one white, one red, and one black. He forged the swords the boy wanted, one sword weighing one kilo, the second sword weighing twenty kilos, and the third and final sword, 50 kilos. Now, if you don't operate with kilos where you're from, just imagine that the first sword is very light. Even a child could pick it up. Second sword is too heavy for an adult to swing around but can probably manage a swing or two before getting extremely exhausted. The third sword is like trying to swing around a um, medium-sized older teenager. Somewhere around there. So you can imagine that the blacksmith was quite befuddled by this, but he did as the boy asked, and he got his coats, and he got his swords, and then he took off to the capital in the main city. And while he was there, he got a job as a baker's apprentice. He got to lift all the bags of flour, grind them, the flour, and all sorts of manner of heavy lifting. And he was strong, so it, so it didn't affect him that much. While the boy was working in the capital of the, this kingdom, the king was out on a voyage, and he was returning home when he got caught in this horrific storm out in the middle of the ocean. The waves were pounding and crashing against the hull of the ship. The mast broke with a deafening roar. The king screamed at the storm, Save us, somebody save us! I will give you anything you want if you save me, my servants, my sailors, my soldiers. 
and somebody answered. It was a sea troll, because there are different kinds of trolls, and this particular one was a sea troll. And he swam over, quick as a shark, steadied the hull, lifted one of his heads over the railing of the boat, looked squarely down on the king, and said, Oh, great king, I will save you, but in return, me and my two brothers get to marry your daughters. Now the king was terrified, not only for himself, but also for the life of his servants, sailors, and soldiers. So he quickly agreed. The sea troll dragged the ship ashore. It wouldn't have lasted a minute longer in this rough waves, but with the sea troll's strength and speed, he managed to bring everybody to safety onto the beach. And the sea troll said, In one year's time, my brothers and I will return to this beach. We will come once a week, the youngest first, then the middle, and then I. And each week, you will present one of your daughters for marriage, and we will marry right here on the beach, according to the troll tradition. And then the sea troll went away. Time passed, and as the date of the anniversary of the ship crashing on the beach was getting closer and closer, the king was getting more and more anxious because he, he actually didn't want to marry off his daughters. He did have three daughters, uh, each lovelier than the other, but he didn't want to marry them off to to trolls, because who wants that? Who wants a son-in-law that's a troll? A troll-in-law? Although I do know some people that have trolls for in-laws. And it doesn't look that fun. So I understand the king thoroughly. So he sent out notice into his great kingdom and asked if anyone could help save his daughters from this terrible, terrible fate. Defeat the troll, and a feast will be erected in your honor. Nobody answered except a tailor that lived in the capital. He said that he would help defeat the troll for the honor of helping his majesty the king. The king was uh, suspicious because you see this tailor, although he had a very fine and nimble hands to sew beautiful outfits, he wasn't very strong to look at. He had long, gracious limbs, long, thin, fin thin fingers, um, the only blisters he had was on his thumb and pointy finger from sewing. He had a long, thin face, thin mustache, tiny goatee, and pale. He didn't, hadn't seen much sun because he had been sitting inside all day sewing. But he said that he would help save the, the princess. So. On the day of, when the oldest daughter was supposed to go down on the beach, the tailor accompanied her. Now, at the same time, the half-troll boy, who had been working in the bakery for a year now, he had also heard about this, and he thought that he would go and help the princess. So... He went to the baker and asked if he could get a day off. And the baker was, what, a day off? Well, that's unheard of, but I guess you've done enough work to get at least one day. But don't ask.
ask for it again for at least a couple of years. Understand? So the troll boy got his day off and he put on his white linen coat, picked up his uh, smallest sword, and then he went off to the beach. Down at the beach, the tailor and the princess were standing there waiting when they saw out into the horizon a boiling waves started crashing away from a point in the sea and and this wake started to come faster and faster towards the beach the troll was on its way and as it started to climb out from the water you could see that it was a scaly green three-headed sea troll the tailor took one look at the sea troll Ran off, climbed the tree, and hid. The princess, of course, was devastated and started crying. But the half troll boy, he came down and he said, Oh, don't worry, princess. I'll handle this. Just sit here, wait, and I'll go talk to the troll. So the half troll boy left the princess, walked down to the edge of the water, and waited for the troll. It climbed out of the waves and approached the boy and said, Well, get out of my way, you tiny boy. I'm here to marry a princess. Now, wait just a minute, said the boy. I would want to talk to you about that first. Are you deaf, boy? Get out of my way before I kill you. The boy sighed. Well, I tried, he said. He, then he pulled out his sword, and with one swift, nimble swing with his light blade, he cut all three heads off the troll. <clears throat> the troll died. The princess was overjoyed, and she ran over to him. And he said, oh, my hero, my hero, whatever can I do to, to, to repay you for this same, oh, my savior? Now the boy, he said, oh, don't you worry about it, princess. It was my pleasure. I'm happy to help. But if you absolutely want to do something, you can comb my hair. Because the half-troll boy loved having his hair combed by other people. So the princess and the half-troll boy sat down and they combed his hair. While they were doing that, the princess took a white linen thread from the boy's coat and braided it into his hair. When she was done, the boy thanked her and then went out of his way. He went back to the bakery. Now the tailor, he came down and he grabbed the hold of the princess and he said, If you say anything about what really happened here today, I will kill you. I am the one that saved you. I am the one that defeated the sea troll. Do you understand? The princess was terrified and she vowed to do exactly as the tailor said. They went back to the castle, and of course there was a big feast, a big party in honor of the tailor that saved the king's eldest daughter. Lots of food, meat, vegetables, bread, wine, meat, beer, musicians, storytellers, jugglers, fools, all the lords and ladies in attendance. It was a great evening, I've, to I've been told. Next week approached fast. And it started to get to that time when it was time for the middle daughter to go down to the beach. And yet again, the king sent out word that he needed somebody to save the princess. And only the tailor answered. Now this time, <clears throat> this time, the king was quite confident that the tailor would succeed this time as well. Even though it looked like a scrawny indoor guy so they went down to the beach now the 
how troll boy also had heard about this. So he went to the baker and he asked if he could get a day off again. But what? No, you can't get a day off. You've already had a day off this year. Besides, I need you to, to fill up the water cistern outside. And you can't leave until that is completely filled. Fine, said the half troll boy. So he went outside. He looked up at the water cistern, which was really, really big. Now, the half troll boy had grown larger and more strong. So what he did, he just picked up the water cistern, went down to the lake, dunked it in so it was filled with water, carried it back, and placed it gently back completely filled to the brim with water, a task that would have taken a normal man a week. So he went and got dressed, he put on his red linen coat, he picked out his second largest sword and went down to the beach. Now I guess you can imagine what happened next. The exact same thing happened. The tailor and the princess was waiting out in the ocean, started boiling, big wake, coming towards the beach. Up from the waves rose a troll, a scaly green sea troll, with six heads. The tailor took one look at it, ah! and ran up a tree and hid. The princess started crying. The half-troll boy went down, and calmed her down and said, I will handle this, princess, don't you worry. So he went down to the water's edge and waited for the troll. The troll rose up from the waves, looked down upon the boy, and he said, Out of my way, young boy, I'm here to marry a princess. Now, wait just a minute, I want to talk to you. Get out of my way before I eat you. Well, I tried, said the boy. So he pulled out his sword, and with one hefty swing, he sheared off all six of the heads. The troll dropped dead. The princess was overjoyed. But the troll boy still wouldn't accept any reward. All he wanted was for the princess to comb his hair. And while she was doing that, she plucked a red thread from his linen coat, braided it into his hair. And when it was done, the half-troll said thank you and went out of his way. The tailor came down from the tree, grabbed the hold of the princess and said, If you tell anyone what really happened here, I will kill you. I am the one that saved you. I am the one that defeated the sea troll. Do you understand? The princess understood, and she promised to keep quiet. They went back, and another feast was happening. Lots of food, vegetables, meat, bread, wine, beer, mead. Singers and storytellers and jugglers and all the lords and ladies in attendance in honor of the great hero, the tailor. And then another week was passing. And the time came for the king's favorite daughter, the youngest, to head down to the beach to marry her troll. And the king sent out notices again. Only the tailor answered. The, the king was very confident that the tailor would succeed. So the tailor and the, the princess went down to the beach. Now the half-troll boy, he had also heard of this, of course. So he went yet again to the baker and asked if he could get the day off. And the baker said, absolutely not. We have a big, big order to fulfill today, and you cannot take the time off. I need you to grind flour, I need you to carry the meat, uh, flour over there, I need you to bake both buns and loaves, and all sorts of money. no chance that you can take the day off. Without your help, I can't finish this order. No way, no how, no chance. The half-troll boy didn't care. She, he actually took off. So he took his 
final linen coat, the black one, and he took his final mighty sword. And he went down to the beach. Now the exact same thing happened. The tailor and the princess was waiting out in the ocean and started to boil and this big wake was coming towards the beach. Up from the waves rose a green scaly sea crow with nine heads. The tailor took one look, ah, ran up and hid in a tree. The young princess was, of course, afraid and sad until the half-troll boy came down and said, Don't you worry, princess. I will take care of this troll. Have no fear. Then he went down to the water's edge and waited for the troll. The troll approached and he took one look at the young boy and said, Oh, so it's you, it's you who have killed my brothers. But I won't be slain that easily, young boy. Now get out of my way before I crush you. <sighs> Sighed the boy, pulled out his mighty sword, a big heavy blade, swung it around, and with one swoop, cut all nine heads off the troll. The princess was overjoyed. She thanked him profusely and asked if there was anything she could do for him. And the boy, he said, well, you can comb my hair if you want to. I really enjoy that. So she did. And uh, while she was combing his hair, she did see the white and red linen thread. So she plucked out a black linen thread and braided that in his hair as well. After that was done, The boy went away, and the tailor came down from the tree, rushed over to the princess, grabbed a hold of her, and said, If you tell anyone what really happened here on this beach, I will kill you. I am the one that saved you. I am the one that defeated the sea crow. Do you understand? I understand, said the princess. So they went back to the castle, to the king, and a new feast was put in order. It was the biggest feast yet. And there was lots of food. The servants brought out vegetables and meat and birds. and But for some reason, there was no bread. No bums, no loaves, nothing to dip in the tasty sauces. And the king was furious. Why is there no bread for my feast? Bring me the baker. So he actually sent his daughters to bring him the baker. And the daughters went down to the baker. And what could they see but the half troll boy? slaving by the big furnace, by the big oven. And they were so overjoyed that they, all three of them, grabbed a hold of the half-troll boy and dragged him to the castle, leaving a very confused baker. When they returned, the king was horrified to see that not only did his daughter daughters not come home with the baker. Instead, they came dragging home a boy. Now, I'm going to guess that some of your parents out there would have been horrified as well. Your daughters come in dragging home with a strange boy when you sent them out to buy bread. What is the meaning of this, said the king? And the princesses started talking, all at the same time. And they said that this is the boy that really saved us. The, 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 the tailor, he's, he's a fraud. I braided his hair. He defeated the trolls. He had a mighty sword. He had a fantastic coat. The tailor hid in a tree. All at the same time. The king slammed his tankard on the table and said, Quiet, one at a time. And you can see the tailor 
he had become deathly pale. All the color had left his face because he recognized the boy and he realized that this was not good. So one by one, the princesses told their stories and the more the princesses told their stories, the, the, the further down in his chair the tailor sank. And towards the ending of the final story, he's trying to slink away. But the king just put a big meaty hand on him and held him back. And the king said, well, can my young daughters, can you prove this? And he said, yes, I braided a white linen thread in his hair after he had defeated the troll. And I did a red one, and I did a black one. And they turned him around, lifted up his hair, and for all the court to see, they could see the three threads in his hair. The tailor was promptly punished, lying to a king, claiming the honor and glory from another, having feasts in his honor when all he did was hide and lie. Now the king wanted to execute him, but the half-troll boy said that the better punishment would be to make him work in the mines, in the quarry, the quarry, hard work out in the sun all day, the exact opposite and what he's doing now. He'll have some blisters on all of his fingers and hands after a week or so. So be it, said the king. The tailor was set off and started working in the quarry for the rest of his life. The half-boy troll, however, he got to marry the young princess. And in time, he also, he and the princess, after the old king passed away, they took over to rule the kingdom. And as far as I know, they all lived happily ever after. Thank you for listening.